Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We finally made it to Veilstone City. Time to take a little look around. Oh, appears that Team Galactic must have beat us here first. Let's see what these guys gotta say. So they got a warehouse set up. Hopefully they've got two-day shipping. And it appears that the gym leader is catching a little flag for being young. Um, ageist much? Cool your jets, Team Galactic. So here we go, Veilstone City. The biggest city in the game, or one of. This one, I guess, is kind of comparable to your Celadons. There is a department store. There's a gym. There is a goon hideout. Although this one's a little bit more in plain sight. So this guy is giving us a heads up on the upcoming gym leaders, one of which will be in the city, and we'll probably fight them today. But that's not for a moment. We're gonna do some exploring here. See what's around here. Bring it around town. Okay, great. So just confirmation that there's two different types of shellos. Shellos, however you say that. Great. A lot of these NPCs are put here for flavor text, but it's pretty bland. But I'm still gonna talk to everybody, because I love it. I suppose the Team Galactic aesthetic of putting spikes on buildings is a good way to make things seem a little ominous and evil. So, the Veilstone department store endorsing consumerism. Yeah, Veilstone's a little, a little strange. All of the buildings are raised up on these kind of rock plateaus. So here we go. The Veilstone department store. Same music as the Pokemart. So let's see what is up for sale here. You can buy basically everything in the game at these locations. I'm not sure if more opens up over time, or if it's just available from the get-go. Probably not gonna buy much here, but you can finally buy Ultra Balls, which is really nice. That's the highest level of daytime Pokeball you can use, and Super Repels. So, I don't know the math exactly, but I do remember reading something that said that per Poke Dollar, the Super Repel is actually the best bang for your buck. So I'm actually going to invest in a few of those. Why not? And I actually do have some things to sell. Usually it's Riff Raff that I found in the underground. In this case, these four things. You can sell these for a decent amount. Stardust, a big mushroom. We all know what those are. A nugget. And for those of you who are a little worse off, a tiny mushroom. So. That's okay. Make up a little bit of scratch from that direction. Let's talk to this lady. Maybe she's the... Okay, she has nothing interesting to say. I thought she would have told us at least what's on the various floors. Here we go. Got the trainer's zone, the battle collection, the TM corner, the pedestal floor, and the rooftop plaza. So we're going to figure out how to walk up an escalator. I've actually ridden in an escalator before that was in the process of malfunctioning, and it rocketed everybody down the incline at high speeds, it was very terrifying. Picking people up off the ground before we had a human puddle was not my favorite thing to do. So here you go. You wanna buy more battle influencing items? You can do that. I will only use them, I guess, if I find them in, in pinches. Here are the stat altering items. So there's those. Not really gonna use those too much. Not a huge fan. I like my Pokemon to be real, not juicing, all right? And we would we get the counter Pokecatch app. I didn't read what she said. Great. So if you need to be able to count up to almost 10,000, you're great. But if you have a five figure number that you're trying to reach, screw you. So there we go. A little bit of recommendation. These people are like steroid sommeliers. Sommeliers, however you say that word. Words are hard. And here we go. This is probably the best part of Veilstone. There's quite a few TMs that you can buy here, and they're pretty good too. 
sometimes you'll wind up having TMs in the various department stores of the games that are just kind of eh. But these aren't too bad. A lot of them are, at least from that salesperson, are more setup moves. And these are more of your offensive ones. So if you're looking for kind of more of a immediate impact, I mean, you can already buy these. That's kind of insane. You can already buy th flamethrower, thunderbolt, and ice beam in indefinite qualities. Sorry, quantities. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. We'll buy one of each, because these are really good TMs. I don't know if this was in the original Diamond and Pearl, but if it isn't, this is a huge quality of life boost. Having all of these moves is really nice. Yeah, I mean, come on. You're basically getting the most high-powered moves that you can find in certain cases with an early presence in the game, so... We'll just go for those for now. And part of the reason why I wanted to grab those TMs is because I feel like my Pokemon don't have a lot of move diversity. So I'm gonna try that now. Let's go by newest first and we'll check out all four. First is Ice Beam. Target is struck with an icy cold beam of energy. This may leave the target frozen. I might hold on to that one for now. I don't know if I need to apply that to Samuel right now. Not quite keen on that. But we have Thunderbolt, a strong electrical blast. Crash is done on the target. This might also leave the target with paralysis. I think... See, I'm at a, I'm at a bit of a crossroads here because I did teach Dimitri the whole stockpile swallow thing, so I'm a little bit... a little conflicted. Also, all of these moves are special-based, so... we're kind of a little hamstrung by that. But I think I will actually go and teach Brandy Psychic now because Brandy kind of sucks. In the offensive department, Confusion is just not really going to do it. And our special attack and attack are both kind of the same. So having something that's, I think, like two times or triple the effectiveness is kind of nice. I'm not entirely sure how Miguel can learn Psychic, being a dark type. That's kind of an interesting thing. I'm going to check its stats for a moment, because I don't think its special attack is very good. No. I mean, it's not bad, but it does have a hindrance of special attack. So that's unfortunate, but we'll come back in the future, grab some more TMs. This is kind of the thing that you learn as you play Pokemon games and you're older, that having move diversity along with type diversity is pretty nice. Um, I have no idea what these do. These might be items that you can use for your underground secret base. That's my guess. I'll talk to the person at the help desk to see if they can tell me. Yeah, I'd... I'm assuming that those are all just aesthetics that are for that. So we'll see what's going on. That child is encouraging us to be ex more exploratory with our balls. All right, hold on. I didn't see what this person said. Okay, great. Thanks. I'm actually going to have to go look that up because I didn't do any research prior to this episode, so I have no clue what on earth that person is saying. So here we have the patented drink machines. And you can buy all of these. They are a little bit better than super potions, but they're not as good as Moo Moo Milk, and we got quite a bit of that. So who needs that when you can have a nice warm glass of milk? And here's just two gentlemen, real cash, hanging out, giving us a sticky barb. Not sure what made that barb sticky, but Okay, so great. That actually could be pretty useful in this upcoming gym. And this woman is very pleased that she has become a regular of the shopping center. We're gonna go right back down to the bottom, ride this long shaft to the base, and continue our exploration of Veilstow. Did not talk to this mustachioed man though. Okay, so this, this store only cares about the regulars. And if you're a new customer, you can screw off. I have no time for you. Yeah, this, this town's a little weird. It's pretty cool in certain ways. It has meteorites just hanging out. You know, nothing to say about 
potential radiation poisoning. Wouldn't have to worry about that, would we? But anyway, these are actually, as I push Charlie out of the way, these are actually form-altering meteorites for a certain legendary Pokemon. And until I find that Pokemon, I don't know if I want to give up the beans all the way. Spoil it for you guys. So here we go. Here is the Galactic Hideout. We dream of the universe. They have huge satellite dishes, so they must get excellent cable. Good for that. We'll come back to that later, actually. I don't really want to explore that yet. I don't know what this place is. I didn't read the sign. Probably should have. Okay, these people apparently have just started their Animal Crossing adventure with all their boxes. So this just kind of reinforces the old warehouse. These people are probably being underpaid. Maybe they should form a union. Let's see, what does this say? Style shop storage. Metronome distribution center. Wow, that is actually kind of tough to say. In here, we have the metronome style shop. I think this might be new. I have no idea what this is. Kind of has some quirky music. Feels like maybe we're on a hot topic or Spencer's gifts. What on earth is happening? Okay, so this is where we can apparently buy outfits. Let's see what's available. Okay. Looks like we just came from cosplaying being a farmer. Ooh, these things are expensive too. Look at this stuff. Oof. I'm not sure I feel about all these. That's not too bad. This, these naming conventions are a little strange though. I'm not sure I really care for any of those. But we do have that tuxedo. I don't know if I'll be able to wear it now. If I can change my style. Nope. Everyday style. So we're just going to be staying pretty boring for now. I don't really have that much disposable income to be blown it on clothing. Why buy clothing when other people can buy it for you? Okay. Great. That's unfortunate. Should probably have done a better job of securing it around that long thing from your chin to your shoulders. People are losing things a lot. What's, uh, what's going on here? I don't know if, oops. Maybe we can use the, the dowsing app. Yep. See if that'll help us at all. I don't know if that's actually what you're supposed to be doing here. Probably not. I just like to show off how useful this is. Tons of utility. Always works. Great. Okay. So we're feeling awesome. I do enjoy the run cycle of Monferno. It's very nice. And there are bodies of water here that we'll be able to use. And it's kind of a bit of a butt that you can get fly in said warehouse, as we've just confirmed. I don't know if it's actually told to you in previous versions of this game, but we can't use it until we complete this gym, so. Talking to people pays off, making friends with strangers. And we get nasty plot, nasty, which actually could be pretty useful for this gym here. User stimulates its brain by thinking bad, ooh, by thinking bad thoughts. This sharply raises the user's special attack. Hmm, that could be interesting. Also, I don't know when Charlie learns Flamethrower, but I feel like it probably does eventually. And our special attack has actually eclipsed our attack. So we're gonna go ahead and teach Flame Thrower over Flame Wheel. I actually had a teacher in school when I was a kid. He used to say wheel, and then he used to drive me nuts. And we'll actually teach Charlie Nasty Plot. Maybe a setup move would be good. We'll get rid of Leer, because we're not really keen on looking at people. We're gonna try to avoid making eye contact, except for the people that we want to fight. 
And let's check and see if we have any held items that... Or holdable items, I should say. I can't talk. That would be good. We have a charcoal, which we got from the underground. Give that to Charlie. I don't know if I really have a ton of things, to be honest. Haven't really been going around and... Been trying to collect things. And the shell bell, let's see. I'm not sure who really could use this, but potentially Miguel. Being a little bit on the... On the weaker side with HP, we wanted to keep him around. It's pretty useful for this upcoming gym. I'm not sure what the point of using that would be. That sounds kind of counterproductive. And I have a spooky plate. So we'll put the spooky plate on Dimitri. That makes sense, right? I think we're pretty much set for this upcoming gym. There's not really a whole lot that I need to do or I, that I want to do. I'm just going to kind of wing it. And this woman is willing to give your Pokemon massages. It's useful if you're trying to level up via friendship. And the pleasantness of a massage. The climax of such a relieving thing to enjoy always makes everybody have a happy ending. So, you know. Why not indulge? So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and enter the old Veilstone gym here. But first, a message from our sponsor. Are we going to take the gym challenge after we've already completed two gyms, Don? I don't know. So Don is trying to flex on us with how much she's bought. Okay, so she awkwardly gets out of the way because that was pointless. So let's see what we've got going ahead of us. The gym leader, Maylene, she is the... What did that say? She is the... The barefoot fighting genius. Okay. So let's go ahead and make things simple here and save before we head inside. Wouldn't want to make any goofs here. And we'll change up our lineup a little bit. I actually want to see what Brandy's capable of. Now that she's got a more bona fide move. I do have a feeling that this gym is going to throw me for a bit of a loop here. Okay, so I do remember this one being really annoying and how it's constructed. So hopefully you guys are ready for plenty of fighting types. He's bringing up some big butts. We always appreciate those. Flying, Psychic, and Fairy-type Pokemon could be real trouble. I don't have any Fairy-type Pokemon, so I still don't know how they work. So yeah, this one has these weird moving shutters that you have to push back and forth as you complete the various fights. You don't have to... I don't know if you have to do all of these. I think you actually might. This is one of those jumps. This is one of those gyms where I think fighting every trainer is kind of a prerequisite for success. So we'll do that. But thankfully, every Pokemon in this gym, for the most part, I believe is at least half fighting, which is nice. So having a Pokemon like a Bronzor being made slower, which is unfortunate because of how fast we are, Yes. Adding in Psychic, the classic sounding Psychic, which that didn't do very much, but maybe we'll confuse this Machoke. And somehow we're faster than it, even after a scary face. I'm not entirely sure what is going on right now, because Brandy is incredibly slow. And we did not trigger the Quick Claw. This might hurt. Nope. So Brandy is actually a decent choice here for fending off this Machoke. Having high defense, being a steel type, could be detrimental, knowing that fighting types would wreck them, but that psychic subtype really benefits us. Makes them neutral in effectiveness. So good job for Brandy. And a Machop, let's go ahead and switch into Miguel. Actually need to get probably a level or two out of Miguel before we face the gym leader. That'd be a good idea. 
not too far off as things stand currently. And we're kind of right around the level of where I'd want to be. So I like that. All of these gym trainers should give an ample amount of experience. So if your Pokemon are kind of on the cusp of being able to level up and whatnot, you'll be pretty close. That's what I would say. But we actually have quite a few Pokemon on our team currently that are relatively effective against fighting types. So that's pretty nice. Let's try off Phantom Force. I don't know if I've used it yet. It's basically the ghost form of Fly, which I think is really nice. I imagine most of these fighting types... Oh, that's not cool. I imagine most of these fighting types don't really have very high special defense. So if you have special type moves, especially ones that are effective, you'll be pretty well off. So I'm going to try not to take too much damage here. I'll probably, depending upon how hurt I am, hopefully I won't have to heal up in between now and the gym, gym leader battle. But there we go, already getting three level ups. And she wants to learn extra sen sensory, or it wants to learn extra sensory. Okay, so that's great that I just taught it psychic. Um, it's kind of redundant at this point, and we just learned psychic, so I'm not going to use it. I mean, if I would have known that, it's kind of nice, though. It does have double the amount of PPs, but that's okay. We're not going to be really using Brandy as much of a powerhouse anyway, so it's kind of a bait and switch. You set up with Brandy, you use your Confuse Rays, maybe you throw Bard in with some Paralyses, get things going. All right, moving along. Gym trainer number two. There's actually quite a few trainers in this one. I don't know what the minimum amount is. Also Jeffrey, Black Belt Jeffrey. What a tough guy. I'm not sure what the minimum amount is for gym trainers. I don't know if it scales, but like we went from Roark having Okay, that's not cool. We went from Roark having... This could be bad. Having just the two. Then Gardenia had... I don't even know. Four? I'm assuming that Maylene at least has four to keep up kind of with that trend. So we're in a bit of rough shape here. But we've got the confusion on our side. Let's switch to Miguel. I'm going to try to beef up Miguel a little bit. A couple extra levels is going to make him a little more formidable. So yeah, using the Confuse Ray is really fun because that happens. I'm a big fan of kind of trolling the people that I fight. But we should be in pretty good shape. Oh, I thought that would have taken it out. It did not. That's all right. Miguel is a pretty good choice for the attacking side of things. The only downside to Miguel, not very hardy, so... You have to be careful when it comes to the defensive side of things. So, some some might call Miguel a bit of a glass cannon, but we do have the Shell Bell. So every time that we do damage, we are going to restore a little bit of HP, which is very nice. That was a very good level for Dimitri. And here we go. This is why I brought Dimitri, actually. This gym, from what I've heard, is chock full of Metatite. Metatite are super annoying. So I'm glad I actually have two ghost moves in case I run out of PP, but worst case scenario, I just go back and heal. But yes, Metatite, super annoying. I probably could have healed that poison off. I didn't. But Metatite are psychic and fighting. So having something that can counter the psychic side of Metatite is going to be super useful for you. You were so lucky, like I was, to catch a Drifloon. <laughs> but yeah. If not, that's okay. Let's actually go and heal up that poison. Because I've got a feeling I'm going to need to at least keep things pretty pretty cash while I'm doing the, the fights. I'm going to try not to leave the gym. That's kind of annoying when you have to scoot out and heal up. So I'm just going to 
use these healing items. I mean, what's the point of having them if you don't use them? Besides having them in battle, I guess that'd be pretty useful, but... What's the point of having them in general if you're not going to use them in general? So here we go. This is Karate Quad, so I'm assuming there are four of them. That would make sense. Maybe that's like the max that a gym would have. I don't think so. I feel like one of the later gyms has more than this. So that's something. I thought that said Black, black Belt Bill Cosby. Okay. So thankfully our Quick Claw is not knocked off. So this Macho can sit itself down and enjoy some confusion. I'm curious about Machokes though. You know, they're wearing those tights that look like a wrestling belt. So it has me curious, is that part of the biology of a Machoke? Like do all Machokes have identical body types that look like that? Do some of them have smaller belts or larger belts depending upon how proficient they are or how old, strong, whatever they are, that defense is coming in handy. And apparently this Machoke is faster than us, but it has been confused and it will not finish us off. We prefer to finish ourselves off anyway. So we're doing great. The one downside to this game, especially in situations like this, where you're in a gym especially, is you're going to find that a lot of these battles are very samey. So there's not really a ton I can do about it. I'm not trying to make things too boring, but there's only so much you can do when you're fighting the same two, three type of Pokemon over and over again. But I am going to, as I said, going to hold on to my plan that... When I do this gym, I'm only going to have as many Pokemon as the gym leader, which I do believe... Oh, he's knows Earthquake. That's crazy. Whoa, that did way more than I thought it would. So I am going to hold on to the idea that I'm only going to use as many Pokemon as Maylene has, which I think is three. So I'm going to have to have some pretty tough choices. Thankfully, Machoke is paralyzed by our beauty, by Bart's sensational appearance can't blame him hopefully he doesn't use the earthquake again that was revenge though this could be bad okay so we're gonna swap out don't actually want part taking any more damage get samuel in the ring here get some experience for everybody else here in this dojo oh man have an early earthquake like that's kind of a butt and it seems like samuel wants to be petted maybe not the best time for petting i would say we are going to try to lower some accuracy here hopefully that'll help us i could have used flash a couple times with barb but that's okay and we'll actually recover here i don't use recover very often because i think it's kind of a waste of a turn but it prevents you from dying and having to use your your items, sometimes that can be useful. And so instead, Machoke is gonna stare us down. Machoke is an interesting Pokemon. I think I've talked about this line already before, but I think I like them a lot. They're kind of goofy looking, bodybuilders. And see, Mud Slap's already paying off. There it is. Sometimes lowering accuracy is a bit of a cheap thing to do, but we're here to win, and we'll do it at any cost. Oh. I think it would actually be cool if using that type of a move did physically cr like cause the sprite of Machoke to increase in size. But soon, we got to get some better moves for Samuel. Samuel's a little bit on the weaker side. Not in terms of stats, I mean, somewhat. But the main issue that I'm having with Samuel is that Samuel's move selection is not wonderful. So... Hopefully we can rectify that soon. And another Machoke, I never would have guessed. So how about more Miguel? That Shell Bell is pretty interesting. Every time I land a blow, I'm gonna recover some HP, I like that. Whatever works for me, to be honest. I don't think the wing attack was enough to kill it last time, so I'm gonna start with a Nightshade. Hopefully that'll be enough to lower its HP and boost ours a little bit. I'm not sure what the rate is. 
I think I re remember reading somewhere that's like one eighth of your HP. Maybe less than that. Maybe one sixteenth. I don't know. So it's not going to be much. Around seven or eight. Ugh. Of course. But that little bit of healing every time. Yeah, it's less. It's less than ten percent. So. But this Machoke is a fool. We'll use another Nightshade. It would be nice to have Miguel be a little bulkier, but there's not really much I can do. Also, I think that it's kind of cheap that the game slows down when it's decreasing the HP at the end to make you think that you're not going to have it. So I'm starting to wonder if that Shell Bell is dependent on how much damage you do. So it could be related. We don't actually know the move Crunch, so you're wrong. Okay. I don't know this gym puzzle, so once I finish off this fourth trainer, this is going to be an absolute circus. As I try to figure this out. Hopefully I can manage to sort out this puzzle for children. And here we go, Raphael. With another Metatite. Thankfully it's just one. And as we've seen, Metatite, very weak to ghost moves. So we'll bring Dimitri back in one last time. Also useful in the, oh. There's the recoil of side effect of high jump kick. High jump kick makes me think of Hitmonlee. Back in the day, when you go to Saffron City, you can visit the dojo there. Pick yourself a Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee. I think Hitmonchan's actually the better Pokemon, but I usually would go with Hitmonlee just because I thought it looked cooler. They're both good Pokemon. And then there's the vastly inferior Hitmon top, which was, Supposed to be some in-between introduced in gold and silver. Not great. But it also gave us Tyrogue, which is great. Okay, so we have Torment here. No, that is dumb. So we will not use that. And we have defeated the Karate Quads. Our hamstrings are burning. Okay. See if we can sort out what this puzzle is. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing here. Looks like we can push these little slides here. And in doing so, I think it opens up certain parts of the room, maybe? So it looks like we need to push this one back. Hopefully this puzzle is very simple because I don't really want to spend a lot of time trying to beat my head against the wall figuring this out. Okay. So it looks like we need to get that one out of the way there in the middle. Man, I sure do love puzzles. Okay. So we push this one here. Looks like that opens this up to move this one out of the way. Huh? Okay. Looks like Maylene is... Looks like we need to open up the middle of the floor, though. That looks like that's kind of our prime operative. In order to get to the middle of the floor, we have to get rid of... Does this push into the wall even further, or is this as far as that goes? Okay, so that looks like that might be stuck. Great. Worst, com worst case scenario, I'm just going to cut to me being at Maylene if I can't figure this out in the next like 10 seconds of my life. So that is probably what I will do to save you guys some time. So I'm going to go ahead and heal up really quick and then I'll see you at Maylene. Okay, so we're back in the gym. going to go ahead and try and show you what the puzzle's like. This one's a little bit tricky, but, you know, it's not horrible. So some, some of this is a bit of trial and error. That's what I would say. You just gotta keep moving at it. Getting these walls out of your way. These are maybe more metaphorical. Think of it that way. These are obstacles in your way, literal obstacles that are preventing you from ultimate victory. So we're doing pretty well so far. 
Now that we've freed up this area, we can push this one to the right. Get that out of the way. So far, so good. I'm going to push this one to the right for now. And this one. That looks pretty good. And I think we should be able to push this one to the right. Cool. We're doing great, everybody. We're doing so well. Look at this. So much progress. What an exciting thing to put into a video. Looks like we're doing okay. So I think push that one that way. And then if we push this one this way, uh, guys, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. And I do believe that opens up Maylene for a butt weapon of epic proportions. Here we go. And we've made it. She kind of looks like one of the Team Galactic goons, but I'm actually going to switch out my team like I said I would. Oop, wrong button. Whoop. So let's go ahead and head to the boxes here. So the team that I'm going to be bringing is not Brandy. It is not Samuel. And no Bart. So we will be bringing Miguel... Dimitri and Charlie. That's going to be our three. Should be a quite the rabble rouse. So let's go ahead and save. No, let's go ahead and accidentally use the poke edge. So let's save first just to be on the safe side. Let's give Maylena a talking to. Okay, this is a great shot. Hopefully I was Thinking that the camera needs to move, if it would not have panned around my head, that would have been very awkward. But Maylene has a bandage on her non-existent nose. So she's the gym leader. Not sure how she got there, but hey, she's going to do her best. Sometimes you just got to learn on the job, right? So here's Maylene, gym leader number three. Great music once again. She's got her yoga pants and it looks like a leotard on, so that's perfect fighting gear. So first up is Meditite. We've seen a couple of these before, and we know just how to take them down. We're going to use Dimitri. Oh, and she knows that she's doomed, so she's going to go ahead and withdraw Meditite immediately. Send out her Machoke. I'm going to try not to have any of my Pokemon faint. That's obviously the goal here. But she knew she was doomed from the moment she was going to be fighting. Ooh, this could be bad. It is a bit. That did a lot. It was also critical, so pretty uncool. I did not realize that this Machoke knew Rock Tomb, so I'm going to switch out to Miguel. Hopefully he doesn't use it again, because we are pretty susceptible to Rock-type moves. All of our Pokemon are actually weak to those, so that could be bad. Okay. Thankfully, Miguel... Is able to dodge. Hopefully we can sneak in a wing attack. There we go. And the choke is down. One out of three. So far, so good. That actually went better than I thought it was going to. We will switch back into Dimitri. I actually chose these three Pokemon because they counter all of hers pretty well. So Hopefully her Meditite does not have something that's good against ghost types. Oh, this could be pretty brutal. Actually, I might heal. We'll do that. Let's go ahead and use one of our Moo Moo Milks. Huh? I'm not entirely sure how a ghost balloon is going to be drinking milk, but it is what it is. Let's see what this Metatite knows. Light screen. That actually could be pretty annoying. Can't really do much with that. I don't know how many turns a light screen is. Maybe three or four. 
So I'm just going to stall for now. They are also going to stall. Okay. So this is a war of attrition here. We're just going to keep boosting up our defenses. Back and forth. This is actually not really something I need to do. Because I know for a fact that one Shadow Ball is probably enough to take out this Meditite. I'm just trying to wear down that light screen. Maylene's Ace is a bit of a, a bit of a butt to take and fight, so I don't really want to do that if it's got protections involved. So we are very defensive right now. Their Meditite is very offensive. I'm just wondering if it actually has any moves that can hit me. I don't know if it does, and that would be really hilarious if it didn't. So hopefully... Okay. I could have actually just used all those stockpiles and then swallowed it up. Okay. So I think that it should be... The light screen should be ending soon, if not already. So we should be able to just take this out with one shot. Nice. And here is the... The big bad. The star of the show in this game. A heavily hyped Pokemon, which is made it into all kinds of additional Pokemon lore. Lucario. The fighting steel type Pokemon. This is not the end. I mean, technically it is. It is your last Pokemon. Lucario is pretty tough. It's pretty fast. It's strong. So we'll see. I'm going to just go for the flamethrower right away. It's going to waste a turn with Screech. I guess I could have used Nasty Plot, raised my special attack, but my special attack is probably pretty high. I'd really like that light screen to fail. This might not do as much as I'd like it to. Lucario is half steel. So one flamethrower is pretty good. She's in a bit of a bind. So we should be able to finish it off with one more flamethrower as long as it doesn't... Oh boy. Oop, this is bad. That's this... Okay. So we're back to square one. Thankfully I do have revives. A revival root. Oh man, I would have had it if it would have worn off. Okay. So this is not ideal, but we're doing okay. Let's try and use Brave Bird and see what that does. That screech that it sets up with is kind of annoying. That's one of the downsides. So that didn't do as much as I would have liked it to, but the Shao Bell will heal us back up. So as long as it can't kill us, we can actually... I want to heal up. I'm going to wind up using all these Revival Herbs back and forth because I want all my Pokemon to get the experience. Okay, so this is just gonna, this is just going to be back and forth, isn't it? Yeah. But it doesn't have a light screen anymore, so that's good. And Charlie is pretty fast, so... Oh, I didn't... Oh, Revival Herbs fully heal your Pokemon. I didn't know that. That's actually really nice. So hopefully without the light screen in the way... we we'll probably sneak in a flamethrower. Maybe we do a mock punch real quick and see how that does. Not too bad. Wearing it down. We should have it now because the flamethrower should be enough to take it out. Because it's wasting a turn with Screech. Thank you, Charlie. I know you're awaiting my instructions. Oh, and it <laughs> it's faster than us. So that is pretty unfortunate. But we hang on with That seems cheap. I should have I should have fainted there. That seems a little cheap. Sucario is pretty annoying. It'd be cool if we could burn it, maybe. Or just knock it out with the flamethrower. So it was the light screen after all. Critical flamethrower. Lucario is down. I didn't bring Miguel back, so it doesn't get any of that experience. That's okay. But we did it. More fair this way, I think. We are too strong. We have defeated Maylene. First try. Easy peasy. And we get the gym badge. Number three, our gym badge actually kind of looking kind of grimy. If you are in handheld mode for the Switch, if you have a stylus or I guess your finger, you can pull up your gym badges and you can swish them all around. Make them all nice and clean, polish them up. We can finally use Fly. And some of Maylene's stickers to toss all over our balls along with 
TM60, which is Drain Punch. Actually pretty nice. We might wind up using that for Charlie. So anyway, we're going to assert dominance three for three. This was Veilstone City Gym. Maylene, the fighting person who didn't know how she got here, was taken down. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you next time. Bye.